And the other thing I'll do that nobody else would be able to do or even think about is we will not have a World War III under President Trump. But you might very well have one under what's happening now. And if this happens, this will be a war like no other war. This will be a war the likes of which this world has never seen because of modern-day weaponry. I mean, think about it in Hiroshima. We've all seen it many times. And Nagasaki, just think about it. Multiply that explosive power times 500, Mr. Congressman. 500. And uh, that's the kind of power we're talking about. This would be a war like nobody's ever seen, probably obliteration. Biden is the real threat to democracy for two simple reasons. He's corrupt and he's incompetent, grossly incompetent. But we have to fight Democrat misinformation at every corner if the Republican Party is to survive. I mean, we're, they're trying to end this party. Not going to happen, by the way, but they're trying. We're not going to let that happen. And much more importantly, uh, if our country survives, our country's in trouble. We're not respected, we're not listened to. Three years ago, we were more respected, I believe, than this country has ever been. I would call these guys, I would get whatever the hell I wanted from them. I didn't have to even make trips. <laughs> president Xi respected your president and he respected our country. Now they laugh at us, they lecture us about all sorts of things. They would have never done that with me. But, uh, it's so sad when I see what's happened to our country. We're no longer a leader in the world. And you know, when they talk about Ukraine, we put up $200 billion. The European nations, who are approximately the same size as our economy when added up, are in for 18. Why doesn't somebody say equalize like I did with NATO? I said, you have to pay your bills. And I took in $400 billion. Just like with Russia, 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 the radical left communists, Marxists, fascists, are always accusing us of exactly what they themselves are doing. It's what they do best. It's really what they do best. They're bad on borders. They're horrible on policy. They want high taxes. They're really bad on everything except for cheating on elections, in which they're perhaps one of the most brilliant groups of people in history. Every abuse of power, the fake news is ridiculously claiming I will commit is, in fact, being committed by Crooked Joe and his thugs. They're trying to lock up their political opponents. They want to lock up their political opponents, in particular me. Thank you very much. It's an honor. They're trying to criminalize free speech and take total control over the American people. But then I came along, and I'm standing in their way, and now millions of Americans are joining us. Millions and millions are joining the Republican Party. We've never raised so much money, and you know who's, you know who's giving us the biggest share of the money? People that are paying $61 on average apiece. Think of it. Not the people that are giving us millions and millions of dollars, but the people that are paying $61, there's never been anything like it. The only one, and it's not even close, is Bernie, crazy Bernie. Bernie had a little thing going. I remember when he had his rallies, and if he had 2,000 people, they used to say, this rally is massive, it's unbelievable. And I'd have a rally down the street, we'd have 35,000, and they'd say, Trump's giving a rally today. They always used to talk about how big his rally, remember Steve? Bernie would have 1,500 people. This is a magnificent the crowds. I'd give one 35,000 people. Trump had a rally, too. <laughs> These people, they are the most dishonest people anywhere in the world. They're the fake news, fake news. They are fake. One of our better terms. We've had a lot of good names. I think fake news is one of the best. The only problem is it's not tough enough because they're much worse than fake. They're fake and they're corrupt. There are a lot of terms, but somehow fake seems to have stuck, so let's leave it that way. Poll numbers reveal that black, Hispanic, Asian, and just about everybody else want to join the Republican Party right now. 
Because the Republican Party is the American dream, not the Democrat Party of open borders, chaos, uniform laughter. They laugh at us all over the world. The world is laughing at us. Can you imagine President Xi? And I have to say, the press gets very angry when I call him a brilliant person. If I say he's brilliant, the next day, article, he called President Xi a brilliant person, yeah. He controls 1.4 billion people with an iron fist. They want me to say he's just of average intelligence, okay? But the look, the whole thing, he stands in front of a million soldiers, they walk by, and they want me to say bad things, can't say bad things. But can you imagine guys like this, Putin, many of them, even like France, Macron, you know, he's a tricky little guy. No, but they're all sharp. How about Kim Jong-un? He's got more nuclear missiles. I said, can you do anything else? Let's go to a ball game or something. Did you ever? And we became very friendly. They hate when they say that. You know, when they hear, well, we started off very rough. Steve was there, remember? Little Rocket Man, he's Little Rocket Man. He said, I have a red button on my desk. And I said, I have a red button too, but mine's bigger and mine works, right? And And, you know, we had a meeting. When we had a meeting, it was in Singapore. It was the, the biggest press gaggle anyone's ever seen. There must have been 10,000 there when I met with Kim Jong-un because he was getting ready to blow up the world. And I wanted to give it a shot to stop him, you know. When Obama, you know, when you sit before you take office, you sit with the president, I said, so tell me, what's the biggest problem? He said, North Korea is the biggest problem by far. Remember that, Steve? He said, the biggest part, I mean, I don't, there's nothing you can do. He's got a lot of nuclear weapons, and I think he's willing to use them. I said, uh, have you called him? No. But actually, he did call him. He called him 11 times, and it wasn't responded to, because they didn't respect that group of people. They just didn't respect him. But I was back and forth, and they were nasty. I was calling them Little Rocket Man, and he was calling me things. And I was saying horrible things about him. And people were actually getting very angry about it, remember? And then one day, like a miracle, I get a call that North Korea would like to meet. I said, that sounds good. And because of that, South Korea was having the Olympics, remember? In the Seoul Olympics. They sold no tickets to the opening event or any other event, because nobody wants to be blown up in the middle of an event, watching the, the high jumpers. Watching the men that entered women's sports. They didn't want to watch. So, so this Seoul Olympics was a disaster. But about three months before that, I got a call that they want to meet. And I said, great, and we met. And they said, not only are we going to be friends, me and him, and we are. We get along great. We get along great. I mean, I think I saved a nuclear war, actually, if you want another truth. Because he expected. He expected to go to war. He actually expected it. He expected to go to war. I mean, he's, he was okay with it. I mean, this guy's got more, more stuff. Did you ever see the picture of him with the howitzers on the beach where he must have had 10,000 shooting into the ocean. Do you think he got an environmental impact statement done for that, Steve? <laughs> With, remember, he had thousands of howitzers. This is a nuclear, this is his little side game. He loves weapons. Thousands of them on the beach. I never saw anything like it. Shooting shells into the ocean. And immediately I think of our country because we're such fools.